Hey, I'm Dr. Terrence Espinosa. This video is going to cover the use of Logos 8 for Hebrew translation. I'm using Logos on a PC that runs Windows 10. Uh, you may use it on a mobile device or even via the online methods. The functionality should be the same, even if the interface looks slightly different. So this video will cover the use of Logos 8 for translation. Now I teach Biblical Hebrew at both a graduate and undergraduate level. I also teach a crash course in Hebrew and Greek, both Biblical Hebrew, Biblical Greek, both in a single semester. So whether you're taking a traditional class or a crash course type class, this video will help you use Logos 8 for Hebrew translation. Now there are four main beats for this video. There's a handout. The handout will, will be in the doobly-doo of wherever this is being viewed, whether it's my website or YouTube or other channel. Uh, and the four main sections uh, is, are going to be a bibliography right up front, where to go for further viewing. And then secondly, we'll talk about how to use Logos if you want to start with the Hebrew Bible. Thirdly, we'll talk about using an interlinear. And then fourthly, we'll talk about checking your translation work, all using Logos. So first of all, Logos has some fantastic tutorials. If you're open, if you have your program opened up, you hit F1, and you can you can look here through the Logos help. But you can also go to support.logos.com and and scroll through and find the videos needed there. Uh, so that they they do a, they do a fantastic job with with these resources, and that's that's probably a place you want to go after this video for further viewing. Uh, also, again, just to note, Logos can be used as a computer program or as a mobile app, or viewed through a browser. And all three ways, if you log in with your credentials, you have access to the books that you purchase with Logos. And that's very nice. I moved a lot of times in my life uh, for jobs, and it's much easier to carry this than it is to carry like 40 you know, boxes of books. And so that's that's important to note. There are, you have options. Also, whether you have a Mac or PC or, or Android or iOS, Logos has a version of the program for you that way. And then there's also the browser if you want to do it all via a browser. All right, let's open up our Hebrew Bible and we'll show you how to use that for translation. This would be analogous to having a Hebrew Bible in front of you on a desk in a library or in a room somewhere and you just start working through the Hebrew text. Now, if you if you did that, if you had a Hebrew Bible in print, you might also have a lexicon or two in print handy. You may have some advanced grammars handy, and you may have uh, some, some commentaries or other grammatical aids handy, and that's all very useful, and I still use a variety of those. But if you have it on Logos, it's a lot quicker and easier to use, and so that's uh, what we're doing here. So you open up Hebrew, Hebrew Bible. We'll start with Genesis 1-1, just you know, to be traditional. And uh, you can open a lexicon a few ways. One, if you have the setting set correctly, if you double-click a Hebrew word, it'll open up that word in a lexicon that's your preferred lexicon. Well, that's great. That's very, very useful, very helpful to get you into the details much more quickly. So you can double-click on a Hebrew word, opens up your lexicon. You can triple-click a Hebrew word, and uh, Logos will do a morphological search for that word in all its forms in the Hebrew Bible that you're using. And then there will also be a translation next to it. And you can change these in settings if you would like. And so that's a very nice way to see a word as it's used in Scripture. So bara, it says, is used 48 times in 41 verses. Some form of bara, the verb uh, to create, is used that many times. So that's, that's a double-click and triple-click triple -click option. Let's close those up, close this up, go back to our Hebrew Bible. Uh, so that's great. You don't need to open up all the books ahead of time. If you don't want to, you can just click on words and find it that way. You could also... Also, right-click on a Hebrew word, and you can look inside all of the lexicons or any lexicon that you have. So, if we're using BDB, it'll open that up. If other lexicons have an entry that you own on Logos, it'll open that up as well. And so, this is, again, analogous to opening up a bunch of books right away. If you click on Power Lookup, well, Power Lookup is going to open up this, uh, this little details pane on the right side and it'll show you the word in all the lexicons that you have. And it's a snippet view, so if you click on the lexicon, you can see the rest of it. That's a nice, very quick way to find the word in all the lexicons that you have available for you in Logos. That's right-click and down to the lexicon section. Click Power Lookup. That's how you get that. Okay, so I'm going to close this all up and show you a couple other things. Uh, one, BHS, there we go. Now, I've already done this, but you could take your open book and drag it here to be a shortcut. I have it here, but now I have it again. And that way, whenever you open up Logos, so you don't have to go through this rigmarole, you just click on the shortcut that you just created, and that's nice. Uh, you can also uh, right-click the Hebrew word, and you can do what's called a Bible word study. In Logos, that's what they call this, and this gives you, again, all sorts of information. You have all the lexicons you own, 
with definitions here. You can click on those to go further into details. You have a nice little graph here of how frequently the word is used. That's pretty impressive. You mouse over it and see more details. Look, Isaiah uses that a lot. Makes sense. And then there's translation. So this will show you how this Hebrew word is translated in the Septuagint. And that's fantastic, just from a click there. You want to, of course, verify the work and go you know, for the details if you're writing a graduate paper. But this is a very nice way to begin to get a sense of how this word is translated. Uh, there's some more information down here and in more ways it's been translated into English or whatever language your Logos is set to. And that's nice as well. Uh, very nice, very helpful. More information. Uh, and you can even go down here to textual searches. And this will show you where the word is used in the Hebrew Bible. So if we're doing this for Greek, it would have both the New Testament and also Septuagint. But since it's Hebrew, it's just Hebrew Bible here. And so this will show you uh, what we saw earlier. That's another long way to get here to show you all the places the word is used in the Hebrew Bible. And there's a nice English translation next to it. Those are all fantastic uses of Lagos. One more thing I want to show you in terms of starting with more of a traditional way of using the Hebrew Bible where you open Hebrew Bible, uh, there, go to tools, go to information. This information pane is really handy, really handy to have. So when you mouse over any word right away, this is like that power lookup thing we saw earlier. But now as you mouse over words, it gives you definitions, it gives you translations, it gives you all sorts of information there. Uh, just right on the side of your screen, which is, again is really impressive. And it's not doing the work for you. It's digging up the resources. You still have to read all the entries and still have to synthesize information for yourself. It's saving you from uh, having to flip through a bunch of pages and find a bunch of books on the shelf. As much as I love the old school, go find a book, the smell, the dust, it's all glorious. Uh, this is uh, Lagos doing a lot of that work for you to get you into the word a little more quickly. So those are all ways to use uh, Lagos, starting with the Hebrew Bible. Now, let's say, for whatever reason, you are using an interlinear. Maybe you don't know Hebrew yet. It's been a while. Maybe you're in a crash course class. Whatever reason, they're all valid reasons to use interlinear. There are two ways to use an interlinear in Lagos. One is to open up an interlinear book. So before computer programs were a big thing and before this kind of technical detail was available, we can buy physical books that were interlinear. So I have some in my office where it's 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 you know Greek and then English or Hebrew and English, or sometimes it would be you know Greek and then four English translations. And so you can do that uh, in a book analog style. And so you can open up, say, the Lexham Hebrew English interlinear, and you're essentially flipping through pages of a book, and they have it all laid out for you nicely. There is the table of contents right here. I haven't shown this yet. Uh, if you are looking at a book in Lagos and you click on these three bars, this drop-down menu, drop menu here, this gives you a quicker way to navigate the book. You can click on title page, contents, go to wherever you want uh, in the book you're reading. Look at that. Beautiful. Okay, so here is interlinear. There's the Hebrew text as you would see it in the Hebrew Bible on the first line. Let's make this, let's make this bigger for the screens you're using. Apologies for that. Okay, so I'm, I'm clicking control plus sign to make it bigger. Uh, you can also change the font size by clicking this menu on the right side, the three dots, and you can manually drag or click on the font size options here. Whoa, that's probably a little too big for us. The other thing is uh, the table of contents I can make pretty small, and I do this quite a bit when I'm working on a text just to give more, more space to the screen. All right, so you have the Hebrew on the first line. And then the second line has the Hebrew written again, but broken down by word. Hebrew, uh, a lot of words compound, or you have words that will attach to words they modify. They'll be separated on the second version of Hebrew. You have some English translations. You have some, some parsing information. And that's all a very good way to use this interlinear Bible. And so you open the book, and that's solid. Take a note. On top of the screen here near the tab, there's this little icon. It's an interlinear tab. It's the Hebrew Aleph and the, the Greek Omega, so the first letter of Hebrew and last letter in the Greek alphabet. You click on that, and that's actually what sets your interlinear parameter. So if you open up this, this book, this interlinear, it opens with this function already clicked for you. Uh, you can also change what you see. Let's say you want some transliteration schemes. Let's say maybe you're a little rusty on reading Hebrew and want to see how it's pronounced in English. You can do that, and that's fine. You can, you can take things off if you don't need them. Uh, so you can modify the interlinear as you want. This is fantastic. It's fantastic use of this interlinear. I'm going to close that and show you a second way to use an interlinear. It's using that same function, but in an English Bible. And not all English Bibles will, will allow Logos to do that. Some will, some won't. 
So we'll see what options we have here with the NIV. Oh, look at that. It's fantastic. So here's Genesis 1. Clicked on the interlinear icon. Make it a little bigger for you. Now, doing it this way, since we're privileging the translated text that reads left to right, the Hebrew is also now left to right. You know, the letters are still the appropriate shape. But Bereshit is now ba, and then you go here, Rashit, and then Elohim. And then you go on that way. So that's different. Um, because you're starting with the English text, but that's also you know something that if you're using interlinear is probably helpful. And as before, you have options for what you want to see on your interlinear. Let's see what other Bibles. ESV is usually good about letting uh, programs do this. So ESV, you can do the same thing. Uh, CEB might have a similar functionality. Let's click one more and just for repetition's sake, show you how to go to the interlinear option. So ESV, this would be the regular ESV in English. It's fine. You open this interlinear and all this information is here for you. Oh, man. And you have a few more options this time. So this, this reflects the difference between each English translation and what they've allowed Logos to do or what you've, what you've paid for in terms of accessing what Logos has done to these translations. Let me show Let's look at one more. Let's look at the Common English Bible, which I have as a shortcut right here. But we'll show you clicking the library icon, Common English Bible or CEB should get us there. Okay, and we'll make it a little bigger. There we go. And show you manually how to make the font bigger again. Three dots. You can also drag this little slider. Let's just go with that. Okay. And then, oh, look at that. There's no interlinear. So the ESV has not been tagged as interlinear for Logos, and that's fine. Not every translation has to. So uh, if you want to use interlinear Logos, you can either use the interlinear book that you purchased as part of the system or use this interlinear functionality with uh, an English or Spanish or Korean Bible of your choice, depending on whether the publisher has, has allowed Logos to do that sort of thing and Logos has, has done it with the translation. So not all, all translations will let you do that, but some will, and if they do, you are on your way with an interlinear. So, so far, we've covered three of the four main sections of today's discussion. First of all, was referencing just that Logos has tutorials, and you should definitely look at those for further details. You also can use Logos three ways as a computer program, as a mobile app, or online through a browser. Uh, links in the doobly-doo in the, in the video description. There's also a handout that goes with all of this, and those will also be, that handout will also be in the description. The second main idea we talked about today is starting with the Hebrew Bible, the more what I would think is more traditional way of using Logos, more analogous to sitting in a library with the Hebrew Bible opened up. So you open a Hebrew Bible, you can look at lexicons, you can click around, you can do things, uh, double, triple click. And, and so I've shown you some, some tricks and ways to use the Hebrew Bible that way with Logos. Now maybe you want to use an interlinear. So we talked about the interlinear function, thirdly, about um, Logos and how to use it from the interlinear uh, actual book and also an interlinear from translations themselves. Not all have them, but if they do, that can be a useful way for you to go as well. The fourth and last thing I want to show you is how to check your translation work. So the screen is blank. Again, we're going to open up using a shortcut this time, the Hebrew Bible that I have. We're going to make this a little bigger across the screen. Okay. So we've seen what happens when you click on words. And even again here, if we had the information pane open, you can see how mousing over words gets you information right away. If you, if you squint or look on the bottom of the screen, you'll also see a little pop-up bar that has the same similar information, tells you the word and the parsing information for it. That's pretty nice. And so that's, that's all good. But what happens? What happens if you right-clicked on the verse and not on a Hebrew word? All right, look at that. So let's do a text comparison, a text comparison here. Click on the text comparison. And it will show you, I clicked on Genesis 1, the whole chapter, so it shows you the whole chapter here. There's the Hebrew on the left column, and then NIV and CEB, NASB, Net Bible, all there side by side by side. So let's say you've worked through the Hebrew, you've translated yourself, and you want to see how other people have translated it. You can compare your work pretty quickly by right-clicking on the verse itself. So let's click on verse 3, text comparison for Genesis 1, verse 3. Oh, it looks, it just gives you all of them, and you can find it here on the screen. Yeah, look at that. And they're all pretty standard. Let there be light, and there was light. Oh, well, 
and so light appeared. So there's some variation. Oh, an exclamation mark in that Bible. Look at that. So you can, you can paratrast that way. And again, don't do this early in translation. Translate it yourself. And there's value in working through. And even if your answers are wrong or you get stuck, there's value in the effort in looking just at the Hebrew Bible. But when you're ready to check your work, check your work this way and see how the translations have been, have been compared, compared, how your translation compares to the others. And that's, that's the end. That's the, the fourth thing I wanted to show you in this video. Uh, thank you for watching, as always. Um, if you have questions, you can email me and we'll chat. Otherwise, I will talk to you next time. All right, God bless you. Bye.